Is the legally embattled Texas Attorney General about to get impeached? It was filled with falsehoods and misrepresentations, and they have never reached out to our office to determine whether anything that was contained in that testimony yesterday was remotely true. This is Chris Hilton. He is the Chief of General Litigation Division at the Attorney General's office, and he's seeking admittance into a formal hearing as a witness. He was denied access. It might have been a little too little too late, though. Why are you here to testify that already has time? He's there in an attempt to defend his boss, Ken Paxton, who has been under investigation by a Texas House committee for several months. Now, with the legislative session scheduled to end this Monday, there's a push to possibly impeach the attorney general this weekend based on the committee's findings. Each of these four men is a conservative Republican civil servant. Interviews showed that they wanted to be loyal to General Paxton, and they tried to advise him well, often, and strongly. And when that failed, each was fired after reporting General Paxton to law enforcement. And this is a big deal, not just for the obvious reasons, but because this is a rare example, at least a rare public example, of Republican infighting. The Texas state government is run by Republicans. The Texas House is run by Republicans. The Speaker of the Texas House is a Republican. Ken Paxton is a Republican. The Republicans, not the Democrats, are trying to remove Paxton from office. This is an illegal investigation. Any discussion of impeachment is completely foreclosed by Texas law. Texas Government Code 665.081 says clearly that any um, proposed impeachment can only be about conduct since the most recent election. The voters have spoken. They want Ken Paxton. So this guy, Chris Hilton, is seen in this clip telling reporters that Texas law, quote, says clearly that any proposed impeachment can only be about conduct since the most recent election. The section of Texas law that he cites, section 665.081, actually says, quote, no removal for acts committed before election to office. An officer in this state may not be removed from office for an act the officer may have committed before the officer's election to office. Nowhere in there does it say clearly or otherwise anything about the most recent election. Paxton was first elected to his position in November 2014, and he took office in January 2015. He was re-elected in 2018 and again in 2022. So Hilton's argument is that Paxton shouldn't be held accountable for any crimes he committed between 2015 and 2022. Uh, by that logic, Paxton presumably hasn't committed any crime since 2022, so if that's true, that's good. But Hilton's argument also seems to acknowledge that Paxton did, in fact, commit crimes during his first two terms as Attorney General. So there are a few things that bother me about Hilton's attempt to defend his boss here. Again, we're talking about the Attorney General's office here. These people work in law enforcement, so you'd think that they would have a better grasp on the law. Sure, you can argue that this one section that Hilton cites is up for interpretation, but the fact that he says it states something clearly that it clearly does not state is troubling. And it's troubling because how many people would just watch that clip, hear what he said, take him at his word, and then proceed to become enraged based on misinformation? We already know that this happens because we see it happen all the time. I don't think I need to give specific examples. Just get on Facebook. People rarely, if ever, go to the original source to verify that what someone is telling them is true. People rarely, if ever, seem to consider whether or not a source is reliable, not even when the source clearly has a motive for misconstruing facts or data. And honestly, if you're going to quote something like a legal document where every word matters, you should probably quote it directly. Remember, this guy is the chief of general litigation. Anyway, Hilton's follow-up argument is that the people of Texas have spoken, and the people of Texas want Ken Paxton as our attorney general. He says that the people of Texas already knew about his criminal tendencies when they re-elected him in 2022, so evidently they don't care about any of the stuff. Therefore, this impeachment would upend the stated will of the Texas people, which he is saying is a bad thing. This is a little ironic, though. Because since when does our state government care about what the people of Texas want? We want better gun laws, we got worse ones. We want better access to polling locations, we got worse access. We want better maternal health care, we got worse maternal health care. We want less religion in schools, we are getting more religion in schools. 
It's also ironic that Ken Paxton is a notorious election denier. He sued to overturn election results in 2020. He was in D.C. on January 6th giving a speech, and now his office wants to suddenly respect the will of the voters. Okay. But Hilton is right about the fact that, yeah, Texans did indeed re-elect Ken Paxton not once, but two times. There are probably a few reasons for that. His most recent opponent might have been a little bit more progressive than what a lot of Texans, specifically Texas Republicans, were ready for. Also, flipping people from Republican to Democrat in Texas seems to require an awful lot of hand-holding, which requires an awful lot of time, money, and energy during campaigning. Additionally, Paxton aligned himself with Trump during his time in office, something that seems to have endeared him to Trump-loving Texans. We already know that Trump supporters tend to care less about criminality or general misconduct than the average voter. We also know that Trump supporters are especially adept and making excuses for their chosen idols. As we are currently seeing on Twitter and other social media platforms, Paxton supporters are claiming that they're coming after Paxton the same way that they go after Trump. It seems to be lost on them that the people going after Paxton are members of his own party. Anyway, Paxton has now been recommended for impeachment on a whopping 20 counts. This will likely be resolved by Monday. If it isn't, the governor would have to call a special legislative session after this one closes. So I guess we'll know in a couple of days. On that note, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks.